NASA's Voyager spacecraft has reached the edge of the solar system and uncovered something unexpected. At the heliopause, where the sun's solar wind meets interstellar space, both probes recorded temperatures as high as 50,000 Kelvin. It's not a solid boundary, but a superheated region, a kind of invisible wall formed by colliding particle flows. In this video, we'll explore what the Voyagers discovered, how they survived it, and what this tells us about the real shape and limits of the sun's influence. The solar system doesn't end where the planets stop. It extends much farther, enclosed within a vast bubble known as the heliosphere. This region is shaped by the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles flowing from the sun in all directions. Eventually, that wind loses momentum and encounters the much older, colder material drifting between the stars, the interstellar medium. The point where these two forces meet is called the heliopause, and that's where NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 made history. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause in August 2012, becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. Voyager 2 followed in November 2018. While their crossing points were different, about 18 billion kilometers from Earth in Voyager 1's case, the data they collected was surprisingly consistent. As both spacecraft exited the heliosphere, they recorded a dramatic increase in particle temperature, reaching up to 50,000 Kelvin. The instruments weren't measuring heat in the traditional sense, but rather the energy levels of particles in the surrounding environment. This zone has sometimes been referred to as a wall of fire, but that label is misleading. There's no physical wall and no flames. Instead, the term reflects the sudden temperature jump in this narrow boundary zone, where the solar wind is compressed, slowed, and turned by the pressure of the opposing interstellar flow. One of the key discoveries was that the heliopause isn't static. It's not a fixed shell, but a shifting, flexible boundary that changes depending on the sun's activity. During solar maxima, the sun pushes harder and the boundary expands. During solar minima, the heliopause contracts inward. Despite the high temperatures, the spacecraft remained unharmed. The reason? The region is incredibly sparse. Even at tens of thousands of degrees, there are too few particles per cubic centimeter to transfer enough energy to heat the spacecraft. This is space at its most extreme, hot, but nearly empty. So, what's happening at the heliopause to create such high energy conditions? The answer lies in plasma physics. When the sun's fast-moving particles collide with the interstellar medium, they can't simply pass through. The pressure builds up. Magnetic fields become compressed. In some cases, those fields may even reconnect, snapping and rearranging in sudden bursts of energy. This results in what scientists call a collisionless shock. There's no air or matter in the traditional sense, but charged particles still interact through electromagnetic forces, and those interactions can generate significant heating. Another intriguing finding from the Voyagers was that the magnetic field outside the heliosphere aligns closely with the field inside it. This contradicts earlier models, which expected a directional shift once the interstellar magnetic field took over. Initially, with only Voyager 1's data, there was speculation that this alignment might be a coincidence. But when Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause and recorded the same alignment, that theory collapsed. The magnetic fields, separated by billions of kilometers and of very different origins, appear to be part of a continuous system. This suggests that the sun's magnetic field may be more deeply intertwined with the galactic environment than previously thought. It could also mean that our models of solar wind interactions with the interstellar medium need to be revised. In practical terms, understanding this boundary has several consequences. For example, the heliopause acts as a shield against galactic cosmic rays. The stronger and more inflated the heliosphere, the more it deflects high energy particles that could otherwise affect satellites, astronauts, and even Earth's atmosphere. Knowing where this boundary lies and how it behaves, 
improves our understanding of space weather on very long time scales. It also helps astronomers build better models for how other stars interact with their own surrounding. The Voyager missions didn't just find a boundary. They found evidence that the edge of our solar system is active, changing, and more complex than expected. This has implications for several areas of space science. First, it affects our understanding of the Sun's long-term variability. If the heliopause expands and contracts significantly over solar cycles, then so too does the range of the Sun's influence. That could subtly affect the cosmic radiation levels near Earth, especially over centuries or millennia. Second, it opens questions about what lies beyond. The Voyagers are now well into interstellar space, and though they've left the Sun's bubble, they haven't reached true stasis. They're still encountering new gradients in plasma density, magnetic pressure, and cosmic ray intensity. This tells us that the space between stars isn't uniform and may contain more boundaries, waves, or structures than expected. Unfortunately, the Voyagers are aging. Their power sources, radioisotope thermoelectric generators, are degrading, and by the early 2030s, they may fall silent. But their legacy will continue. NASA is already preparing a successor, the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, IMAP, launching in 2025, won't leave the solar system, but it will map the boundary by detecting energetic neutral atoms that stream back from the heliopause. This will offer a broader view of the heliosphere's shape and help track its changes over time. Meanwhile, mission concepts like the Interstellar Probe, currently under study, propose a direct journey up to 1,000 astronomical units from the Sun. That's over 20 times farther than Pluto, and it would offer a clearer view of what lies beyond the heliopause, how the interstellar medium behaves, and whether other boundaries exist farther out. Voyager gave us the first data points, but the full picture will likely take decades and future missions to resolve. Far from being a quiet fade into the cosmic background, the boundary is active, hot, and magnetically structured. The discovery of a 50,000 Kelvin region at the heliopause challenges our assumptions about solar interactions with the galaxy and gives us a rare glimpse into the transition from a star's domain to interstellar space.